this session I will talk about uh, Apache Tinkerpop and graph databases. So who has already used or is familiar with graph database? Raise your hand. Nobody, okay. My name is Yu Haidwan. I'm working as a technical advocate for Apache Cassandra data stacks. Uh, I'm also a committer for Apache Zeppelin and a maintainer of the Zeppelin Cassandra interpreter. So we data stacks, so you have Apache Cassandra, which is an open source project, and data stacks, we have, uh, we distribute a commercial uh, edition of Cassandra. So you have the open source core plus extra feature. And we call this data stacks enterprise DSE. So why graph database? I want first to highlight the use cases of graph databases. So the first use case uh, where a graph database can be useful is personalization and recommendation engine. So imagine you are buying a book on Amazon or whatever. And in fact, on the bottom of the page, sometime you are propose some related books, so the books that should make you happy. Because, for example, if you are buying a book about science fiction, the website will propose you some all the science fiction books and so on. And the idea behind this recommendation engine is I identify the customer and I can identify the links between this customer and all the books he has purchased in the past. And then I try to compute some uh, similarity between the books he bought and the books I have in my database that can match his um, requirements. I have a demo later for this kind of scenario. The second use case is so social network, right? Uh, if you are a user on Facebook or on Twitter, um, you want to follow people who share the, sa the same interest as you. For example, me, I have interest in distributed system in NoSQL database, so I try to follow the people who are talking about those subjects. And the idea with graph database is from one node, which is one person, I try to navigate to all the connected people by some similarities again. The third use case is, for example, in medicine, when you have a, di a disease and you try to find the root cause and to analyze the impact of this disease on the population. So for example, if you have uh, obesity, uh, most of the time you have diabetes also, hypertension, and those diseases are all related. And the last use case I can see is for managing IT infrastructure. In your infrastructure, you have network, you have switches, you have power plants, and so on. So imagine that here I have a power plant, and my this uh, equipment goes down. So I want to know if this equipment goes down, what are the impacts on all the equipments after that? So you have a power shortage, of course, and before the equipment, you have a power surge, right? So graph will help you to analyze this. Now, what is the difference between a graph database and a relational database? So in relational database, this is a, a very classical schema. I have a user table, user with person ID, first name, last name, movies table, movies ID, title, country, and a view table. So which person has watched which movie at what time? So this, the view table is a joint table because I am defining a relation between the user and the movie. So in a relational database, you define first the relationships with joint tables, and then you store the relation in a normalized fashion. In graph database, this is the same thing in graph database. You have a user circle, vertex we call it, a movie vertex, and then you have the relationship view that connects a user to a movie, right? So the database does the same thing. The graph database does the same thing. It defines the relationships, it stores the entities, but also it allows you to explore 
and discover unexpected relations. So what does it mean, unexpected relations? It means that first you make a query about a user watching some movies, and then you just discover that those users are also watching other movies that, that you didn't ask for in your first query. So in fact, a graph database is only useful where you have most of the values of your data in the relations. Now let's look into Apache Tinkerbop. What is Apache Tinkerbop? It is an open source project, and it is a framework to compute graph data. It is a framework, so it doesn't mean that Tinkerbop can store your data. You need a data store, and then Apache Tinkerbop can sit on top of this data store to analyze your graph data. So it is an open source project. It has joined the Apache Foundation in 2015. In the Tinkerpop framework, you have many components. So each component is represented by a cartoon character. Here, you have Gremlin, Rexter, and so on. So in fact, it is a stack. The framework is a complete stack. You have the Gremlin server, the yellow dock on the top. So it is just our uh, backend server to serve all of your graph requests. Then you have the Gremlin in green, which is the query language for graph data. You have some user DSL. You, each provider of the graph data store can implement their own strategy for performance and optimization. And in fact, in this landscape of Tinkerpop, you have two query engines. On the left, you have the OLTP, which is the real-time query engine. And on the right, you have a graph processor, which is OLAP, which is a batch. So what is different between real-time and batch? Well, real-time is I start from a single vertex, and I try to navigate. So I can do it in real time, even if I have thousands of gigabytes of data, because I always start from a single point. With a lab processor, the idea is compute, I don't know, give me the top 10 buyers on my website. So to be able to, to tell who is the top 10 buyers, you need to do a global ordering. So you have a global order by. It means that you need to scan the whole table, the whole graph database. So it is very slow, and that's why we call it the batch processor. In the graph database family, you have two types of graph database, RDF, which comes from the web semantic world, and property graph. So in this talk, I will only focus on property graph. So for the property graph family, you have many implementations. You have Neo4j, which is pretty well known, as a graph database. You have Titan, Datastax Enterprise, which is built on top of Cassandra as a data store. You have OrionDB, and so on. So what is a property graph? What is the definition of a property graph? So this is the formal definition. A property graph is a set of vertices and edges. Okay. So a vertex can be a node, and an edge is an arc connecting two nodes together. A property graph is directed because one vertex is connected to another vertex by a directed edge. You have a direction. This connection is binary because you can only connect two vertices together, not three, not four, only two. Of course, you can connect a vertex to itself. Right? It's allowed. Each vertex has some attributes. So on the user vertex, you have name, age, and also each edge can have attributes. The view edge has view time attribute. So until now, I define vertex and edge. So all those are just. Um, Topology. Now, how to distinguish between a user and a movie? We introduce the notion of label. You have the vertex label user and vertex label movies. A vertex label is just a type of vertex. Okay. To distinguish between a user and movie, we have the same semantics with an edge label. So, a view edge, edge label, a nose edge label. Now that we have defined what is a property graph and 
the topology of a property graph, let's talk about the query language. So this is a metaphor from the hardware and from the graph landscape. The graph, in fact, a graph is just a bunch of data you store on disk, right? The traversal, the gremlin cartoon here, in green, can be seen as the CPU program, a CPU thread jumping from data to another data. And the traversal is just the program you are writing, the query you are creating. Let's have a simple example. This is my graph schema. I have a person with some properties, name and gender. This person is connected to the movie vertex with two connections, actors and directors. And you can see here that the connections are directed, so it has a direction. A movie has some properties, title and year. A movie is rated by some users, which knows all the users. And the, on the rated connection, you have the rating value from 1 to 10. So I want to answer the question, give me all the movies in which Harrison Ford has played as an actor. How can I do that? I start with G. G means graph. G.V means give me all the vertices in my graph. So where are the vertices? Person, users, and movies. So g.v will give me all of those three vertices, vertex, uh, vertex labels. But I want only the person. So g.v dot has label person. I'm only interested in vertices of label person. So here. g.v dot has label dot has name Harrison Ford. Now it is a filtering. Instead of giving me all the person, all the people, I am only interested in vertex person whose name is Harrison Ford. So it should give me a single vertex. Now it becomes interesting. In actor. What does it mean, in actor? In means incoming. So I'm here. I'm from the person vertex. I want to take the incoming edge. So there are two incoming edge, actor and director. I want to take the incoming edge with the label actor. So I want to navigate using this incoming edge to the movies. So now after this step, I am staying at the movies vertex. So this is my query. Give me all the movies in which Harrison Ford has played as an actor. So my final destination is here at the movie vertex, and I can have multiple instances of movies. Right? Now, if I want to have a more complicated query, I say, give me all the movies in which Harrison Ford has played as an actor with the average rating bigger than seven. So the query starts exactly as the same as previously. But now I add an extra step where, so there is a filtering. Instead of taking all the movies of Harrison Ford, I said where incoming edge in E is incoming edge. So now I'm staying at the incoming edge rated. Values rating, so for each coming edge rated, I look at the value rating. I compute the average with the mean step. And I say that this average should be greater than 7. So now, if you only give me all the movies of Harrison Ford with average rating greater than 7. So in fact, a query language with graph is very visual. You are moving around from one vertex to another one, following some edges. Right? And in fact, every time you create a query, a query with graph, you have to see your schema. If you don't have this schema, you will not be able to create this query. Do you have any questions so far before I move on more complicated examples? No? OK, so let's do something more complicated. So this is my 
I have a notebook, so this is DataStack Studio. This is a notebook to use to query graph data. So this is my complete schema. A movie connected to a person by director or actor. A movie is rated by some users. On the rated, I have the property rating. And the movie can be connected, can belong to many genres. This is my schema. So I, I put it here so everyone can see it. So now g.v. So what is g.v, in fact? This query is, in fact, using Groovy. So I can say g.v.getClass. What is the type of g.v? This is default graph traversal. Okay, so what is graph traversal? Well, it implements, of course, the interface traversal. You see the API of Tinkerpod. And a traversal is an iterator of something. OK, so it means that my g.v is an iterator of vertex. Because I fetch all the vertices. And since it is an iterator, I can call the method next. Let's see. OK, this is a vertex genre is a vertex. So it is completely random, right? Now let's see. This is an analogy between SQL and Gremlin. So imagine that you have a movie table in SQL. Select star from movies limit 10. Give me the first 10 or just 10 movies from my table movies. What is the equivalent in Gremlin graph query? G.V is an iterator of vertex, has labeled movies. So now my iterator of vertex is transformed into an iterator of movie. So if I display my graph, yeah, my schema like this, you can see better. In fact, it corresponds, if you are familiar with Java 8, Stream, or Scala, or whatever, functional programming, it is an equivalent to a filter step to transform your iterator of vertex into an iterator of movie. And then limit 10. It means that you take first 10. Execute. OK. This is the first 10 movies. Now, what if I want to select a single column? Select title from movies, limit 10. It is very simple. I add an extra step, values, title. Because each movie has properties, right? Country, duration, movie ID, title. So to only display the property title, I use the step values title. And now the result is title. title. I have only the title of my movies. To select multiple columns, select country, duration, title, year. Now I need to use another step, value map. What does it mean? It means that it transforms your iterator of movie into an iterator of map, string object. The key of the map is the column name, country duration. The value of the map, of course, is the value of this column. So to see that, let's say, click on play. So here we are. You have the first 10 movies displayed by duration, country. And if you look at the row display, you see here that it is a map structure. Key value, key value. Okay. Now, what if I add a filtering? Select star from movies where years equal 2000. Give me all the movies released only in year 2000. So g.v. has label movie that has year 2000. So this is a filter step. I filter on the property year of each of my movie vertex. So let's see. OK, so where is the year? Here. All of them are released in 2000. If I have multiple filter, like give me all the movies released between 2000 and 2010 in France, for example, I have two steps, has year inside 2000, 2010 followed by Haas, country, France. 
Okay, you have only three movies in front. Now, what if I want to do an order by? Select title duration from movies order by duration, desk, limit 10. G.V.has label, movies, so I fetch all the movies, and then I order by what? By duration, decrementing, so it means descending. And then, because I want to take only the title and duration columns, I use, again, the value map step to fetch only title and duration. Let's see. So here are the movies with their duration in descending order. Okay. What's about group by? We have order by now. We want to do group by. Select country max duration as longest duration from movie group by country. So for each country, I will group I will, for, for each movie, I will group uh, all of them by country of release and then take the longest movies for each country. Okay. So this is the SQL query, so it is very classic SQL. Now, with Gremlin, g.v.has label, movies, so I have an iterator of movies, group, group by what? By country. So the first by is for by which column, by which property of my movie I want to group. So the outcome of this first group by is an iterator of map. The key of the map is a string which corresponds to the country. The value of my map is a collection of movie, right? So for each country, I have a collection of movie because I'm grouping by country. Now I have an extra step, an extra by. This corresponds to a projection. Because I'm not interested, for each country, I don't want to see a collection of movies. For each country, I want to see the max duration in this movie. So now, in the second by close, I do a projection. Project by what? By values duration dot max. So now my map of string collection movies becomes a map of string integer. The integer corresponds to the max duration. So if I do that, and then I have also an order by, order by max duration. If I do this and this. Let's see what, okay, I have the movies and the max duration. And it is not order by duration, you see. 126 second, 120, it is completely random order. There is a problem in my query. Why? Because in fact there is a trick. Here I have an iterator of map. So an iterator which contains a collection. When I do an order by, order by values desk, I will order my iterator. But is it wrong because how many elements do I have in my iterator? So I will just call, call the count. My iterator have just one value. So in my iterator, I have just one map. So if I do an order by, I order on one single element. If I do a limit, I limit on one single element, which is useless. Right? So in fact, what I want is to, to, to perform my ordering inside this map. And not at the, the ordering should be done at this level, not at the iterator level. That's why I need the local keyword. It means that don't look at the iterator, look, off, look at the collection inside the iterator and order those collections together. Local. Now, let's see. Here we are. The ordering is correct. Let's talk about joints. Joints is a big topic, right? Imagine that I have a movie table and a joint table. And I want to, give, to, to fetch all the movies title where the joint name is sci-fiction, sci-fi. 
So normally each movie belongs to multiple joints, right? So I have a joint table, movie joint. So in SQL, I need to do two joints from movie to movie genre and from movie genre to movie to genre and then filter on the genre name. This is the SQL, very classic, nothing to say more. In Gremlin, any joints correspond to a traversal. So g.v. has label. Let me show you again the schema. G.v. has label movie, we are here. Filter. We want to filter the movies which belongs all, only to science fiction genre. So out belongs to. From the movies, I'm going by outcome, outgoing edges, which belongs to uh, label. So here, so from movies, I move, I'm moving to genre. And then I put a condition on the genre has name science fiction. So this simple step corresponds to the big joints here. Right. On graph, you are just moving. And then when I have done the filtering, I do a projection. So in fact, I want to show the movie title, sorry, the movie title and the genre. I could use the value map, right, because I want to display a distinct column. But the problem with value map is that value map only work on properties. And title is a property of my movie, so it will work. Right? I have a movie, I have a title here. But the genre name is not a property of my movie. It is a property of another vertex. So I cannot use value map. I have to do a projection. Project. Project by what? So the first parameters are the label of your columns, title label, genre label. And then you follow by by. First project by title, which is a property of my movie. And then project by outgoing edge belongs to. So we are here at the genre vertex. Take the value name of each genre. And because each movie has multiple genres, we have a list of names. So we have to concatenate them, a full step. I want to concatenate those names with a lambda expression with space. So now if I click on play, OK. This is the movie, the title, label, the column label. And this is the genre column, science fiction horror, concatenate with space. So as you can see, a complex join in SQL is just a simple filter in graph. Now let's see something more complicated. Advance. Let's see some recommendation engine. How can I create a recommendation engine in graph with Gremlin? So give me the most rated movies of Harrison Ford. So g.v. has person name Harrison Ford. This is equivalent to has label person, has name Harrison Ford. So it is a shortcut. In actor, so incoming edge actor. So now I'm at movies, the text. I want to order those movies by what? by their rating, the average rating, so by incoming edge rated, values rating dot mean. So this query, we have seen it before during the example. Okay. And now I project the result by movie titles and by average rating value. So here we are. All the movies where Harrison Ford has played as an actor, and their average rating. Surprisingly, Blade Runner has the best average rating before Star Wars. I'm sorry if you are a fan of Star Wars, but Blade Runner has better rating. So Blade Runner is the best rated movie for Harrison Ford in my data set. Okay. Now, what are the genres of Blade Runner? 
So we have the same query as before, which should give me, limit one should give me Blade Runner. And from Blade Runner, so where is my schema again? Display the schema. From Blade Runner, which is a movie, I'm going to the genre vertex by the arguing edge belongs to, and I want to take the name of the genre. So I have a science fiction and action. So Blade Runner is a science fiction and action movie. OK. Now let's create a collab collaborative filtering engine. So g.v. has movie titled Blade Runner. So this is my Blade Runner movie. I save it as Blade Runner. So if I like Blade Runner, what are the movies that we should recommend This is a very complex step, so let me explain you in detail. From the Blade Runner movie, we are going in edge rated. So from here, the incoming edge rated, we are here. Where value rating is greater than 8.2. So we, we only take the incoming edge rated where the value rating is greater than 8.2. And then out vertex, outgoing vertex, so we are here. The outgoing vertex of the edge rated is user. So this line means, from Blade Runner, give me all the users who rated Blade Runner more than 8.2. So from a single movie, I have a list of users okay, that rated this movie more than 8.2. 8.2 is the average rating of Blade Runner. Now I'm going back, because now I'm at user vertex. I'm going back. I'm going by the outgoing edge rated where rating is greater than 8.2, incoming vertex movie. So I'm going back to movie. And this second line means for each of those users who rated Blade Runner than more than 8.2, give me all the movies they rated more than 8.2. So you see the pattern. Blade Runner, all the users who give a good rating to Blade Runner, all the movies they have given a good rating, were not equal to Blade Runner, which are not Blade Runner. So this is a very simple recommendation technique, right? Now, because I can have duplication, I use DDUP. DDUP to remove duplication. And then I project, again, I want to display my result by movie title, movie average rating, and draw. So if I click on play, I should have some results, uh, a lot of results. How many? 257 movies. And this is too much. I, I cannot recommend 257 movies to the user, right? Too much. And if you look at the average rating, some of the movies have a not so good average rating. For example, Highlander has only 6.8 as an average rating. So I want to filter, so to reduce this result set. So how to do that? Simple. I add an extra filtering where the average rating of each movie that I have found is greater than 8.2. So there is a trick here. Each user has rated those movies more than 8.2. But maybe someone else rated 0 or 1. Right? So the average rating can be very low. So I want to exclude those whose average rating is very low by adding an extra filter. So now I have less result. I have only 36 results. And here we are. So we have um, a lot of movies. All of them has good average rating. But the problem is, look at the genre. For example, if someone likes Blade Runner, I'm not going to recommend him The Godfather, even if it has an excellent average rating, because the genre is not the same. Right? This is a drama movie, and Blade Runner is a science fiction action movie. So again, I add an extra step to keep only the movies who drawn is either action or science fiction. 
And now, I have only three results. Seven Samurai, which is an action adventure drama, Pulp Fiction, thriller action, and a Clockwork Orange, science fiction drama. So this is how you can build a very simple recommendation engine with graph in real time. In the real time, because we always start with a single movie, which is Blade Runner. We do not need to full scan all the, all the graph database. We start with a single um, vertex, and we expand. But, but every, time, every time we expand, we put filtering. Like, we don't fetch all the users who rated Blade Runner. We fetch all the users who rated Blade Runner more than 8.2. So every time we expand, we put some filter to limit the expansion. Because otherwise, you have like millions of results. And it will take time. And then we filter. We, the more you add conditions on filtering, the faster your query is, because the less results you have. It is just common sense. So this is the example of recommendation engine. And my last example will be social network. So look at our schema. I have an user which knows another user. This is Facebook, right? A user knows another user. OK. So my first query display the first degree relation of the user with most connection. So this is a batch query. That's why I, I said graph allows scan to true. Because in real production, when you have, I don't know, 10 terabytes of data, you will not do this query in real time. You will do it in batch. Why? Because g.v. has label, give me all the users, order by what? So all the users in my graph database, order all of them by out edge nodes. So each user has an outgoing edge nodes, count them. So for each user, count the number of outgoing connection and order all of them by decreasing descending order. Limit one, so take the user who has the m most connection. So this one which should give me just a single user. Right? User A61. Now the first relation, first degree relation of this user is out nose. From this user, I want to show also his first conne degree connection. So, okay, those users are friends with our users. And what you can see is, surprisingly, I only ask for give me all the first connection of my user. And what I have as a result is, by the way, those two people know each other also. And this is an unexpected relation, because I didn't ask for that. I asked, for, give me the first connection of my original user. And I realized that those two friends know each other also. So this is completely unexpected. And graph, only graph database can show me this. So now I want to display the original user, union identity, with Out, no, so with his first degree connection, this is how this works. So, okay, this is my original user connected to all these friends, and those of two of those friends knows also each other, right? Okay, now uh, let's see if I want to display the second degree connection. So, normally I should do out knows, this is first degree connection, and then out knows, right? Second degree connection because I do it two times. But I can have also a trick. I will use the repeat. So instead of typing out knows two times, I say repeat the traversal, so continuously working by the nose, outgoing nose edge, Two times, times two. So 
So now let's see how it works. Okay, oh, I have a lot of data. So this is our original user. You see the first degree connection, and each for each of the, this first degree connection, we display the second degree connection. So you, as you can see, the graph can explode very fast. Right? And then if I say times three, well, it will take minutes to render. And also, uh, in the display, you can see that some users are bigger than others. Why bigger? Because in a display, I can say the size of the display depends on the age of each user. So show legion. Okay. And the color can depend also on the degrees. So now, if I said the size depends on the degree and the color depends on the age. It means that bigger dots are users which, which have more connections. And the color depends on the age. So most of those people have 30, around 30 years old. This one is very old, 52, you see, by the color. So by the color and the size, you can directly know the information of your graph. OK, I think I have only three minutes left for questions. So we will stop there, because I have a lot of demo, but we don't have en enough time. So I will take question now. No question? So let's do the demo. So find all the people between 25 and 30 years old connected to my user by some degree. So now I'm not interested first degree, second degree, I don't care. Whatever connection it is. So user has labeled user, has user ID, U861, emit, repeat. Now I use the repeat, but I put a time limit. Why do I need a time limit? Because if I don't put a limit, it will explode very fast. So to avoid explosion, I said this repetition should be stopped after 40 milliseconds. Aust nose, so I navigate through the edge nose, simple paths to avoid cyclic paths. And then has age between 25 and 30. OK, so where is our original user? No, this is our original user, right? And this, those are the users connected to him by some degree between 25 and 30. So 25, uh, 25, 29, 25, and so on. So yeah, quickly, you can. You can do complex query. For example, give me all the people who are connected to me between 25 and 30. That like science fiction, right? And then you put extra filtering so that you say, okay, those people they like science fiction, and they are between 25 and 30. So let's organize, I don't know, an event with science fiction movies party at some at home, right? So this is how you can use graph to query social network. Okay, stop. 50 seconds left. No question, so thank you.